Hey guys, welcome inside the PGA Tour trailer here at TaylorMade Golf. This is our mobile workshop that moves around with us from location to location, servicing the game's greatest players. My name's Chris Trott. In front of me, I have a Dustin Johnson build sheet. And today, we're gonna walk you through his driver build and exactly what he plays. As we're right here, let's start with the shafts. We've got some of the best shaft companies in the game. Every one of the names that you would know that you associate with Tour Golf, or when you go into your local shop, or when you go on the TaylorMade website and you look to buy a product, we've got it all in here. Dustin, at the moment, is playing the Fuji Cora Ventus Black in 6X. Gonna grab one of those and then move straight on to the head choice that he's in at the moment. Now, when we get on tour, we get very specific. It's a Sim 10.5, but we want the actual loft to be 11. Loft is everything for you guys out there when you play golf. It dictates launch and spin. We look at launch and spin out on the road when we fit the players, because that gives you the optimal ball flight. So when you have that little loft sleeve that we're gonna get into next, that is what you're changing. So Dustin plays, like I mentioned, a 10.5 Sim. Now, this is important because it says he plays it on 11. I have a head right here that's already measuring 11 actual loft. That then changes the face angle slightly. But as I've mentioned, when you go for your fitting with your experiential reps, the sleeve is what you're gonna notice changing, which changes the loft, which you can then dial in the flight that's best fit for your game. Let's head over to this side and you can see here, I am ready to rock and roll with any builds that we would do and the next piece of the process. So first off, take your wrench and take out the actual sleeve that comes in the head. And obviously you're gonna remove any of the plastic that you have on that golf head. You want that off. Now this is a 1.5 degree sleeve. Out on tour, we have options. We have two degree, we go all the way down to 0.5. You don't see them very often anymore or a one degree sleeve because it's all about with how precise these players are at hitting the center of the golf club, you need to deliver the optimal launch, optimal loft, like I mentioned, in order to give you the perfect ball flight. Then we move over into, we have a quick drying glue, the, the epoxy that we use out on tour. We would use two parts black to one part honey. We can build a set of golf clubs and have it out on the range and ready to go in 15 minutes from this process. You're walking through it today, but you must obviously get the quantities correct. Five grams straight out the gate, there you go. Then we add in the one part honey to the two parts black. These used to be used, believe it or not, for the bases of snowboards. So this is what they used epoxy to get the snowboards running perfectly and get the base exactly how it wanted to be. We use it on the tour because it's quick drying when we put it under the high temperatures. Next thing you knew, you use is the centered beads. Now this is a fine, you can just see that right in there if you get in there. Reason we use that is when you put the golf shaft in, you want to center it into the actual club. So you have your epoxy now settling in, mixing together, that's ready to go. It's not gonna dry instantly. It can sit there for as long as an hour to allow you to build a set of golf clubs. Now, Dustin Johnson, I've got the golf shaft next. We're gonna do the tip preparation and the butt cutting. He tips this one inch. What does that mean? What is he doing? Well, again, it comes into dialing in your spin. When you launch a driver, you want the spin, that will either keep it in the air or it will help it come down as well. So depending on the speed that you deliver, the tipping of the golf shaft dictates the spin. So we're going one inch and then he's going 45 and three quarters end of grip. Now he plays a tall velvet grip and I know the butt cap on that is an eighth. So I'll make all these adjustments to cater for that. So I know that Dustin, I've already measured this head, I already know coming out the draw, it was around 11 actual loft. That's what we want, that'll give him the face angle. Put that back in there at standard. It's important you do that. If you were looking for a different face angle or a different loft, you'd set it at a different position. Tip cut, one inch straight out the gate. Bright color to contrast with the black. Flip it round, let's cut that tip off straight away. Next piece, wanna get the tip 
ready to take the, the uh, epoxy. I've done this a few times, but you are clearing off the paint. Now it's ready and it will bond when those two pieces go together. The next section you want, remember I said an eighth, it's an eighth of an inch for the butt cap. So as we come down here to cut, he plays 45 and three quarters on a USGA ruler. That's this housing here, it's USGA. It's gonna be the center of the sole through to the butt of the golf club. But I know based on the grip he plays, I need to cut one inch, sorry, one eighth of an inch less than that. Again, use the contrasting color when you go for that and nip the butt. Just to get rid of the fibers, I obviously run this because you don't want to get any of those later in the process when you put the grip on, that can catch your finger. You don't want graphite in your finger. Good place to get that right, bang it on. Now we're ready for the epoxy. Okay, next stage, epoxy. Remember I said this was ready to rock. You can see how easy that goes on. Usually like to put a little bit into the tip as well. Now, the shaft beads, I mentioned them earlier, the quick center. This is where this comes into play. When you put the quick center in, it's now aligning the center of the golf shaft. What I want you guys to do, or anyone building this, what we'd always do, graphics down the back, give it a little tap, then remove any excess glue. I'll just reach across here. Excess glue removed from there. And take off the driver head once you've got your graphics perfectly lined up. Dustin, very particular about that. He doesn't like graphics off at all. Obviously, when you change the FCT setting, it will spin those graphics around when you move that loft sleeve. That's not a play he likes. Now, into the curing cell, lock that in. Two minutes 45 is your timer. That is set and off and running. This will cure that. Remember I said it's snowboard epoxy. This is why we use it. This cures it and it literally is ready to hit as soon as I can put the grip on. On that subject, across the other side here, I'll show you the grip choices that we have for our team tailor-made players. Really cool section of the truck. Every single player has a custom grip and how they build it up. You can see it's dominated predominantly by Golf Pride. Dustin, Dustin Johnson right in the middle here. Three in the right, two in the left. And it's exactly that. It's three tapes in his right hand and two tapes in his left hand. He's trying to build up, because all these grips have a slight taper in them. He's trying to build up the taper and reduce it. The grips that you will use can dictate how you hold the golf club and how you release the golf club. So it's an important part of your experiential fit when you go through and you test your golf clubs. Make sure you get the right amount of tapes and the right grip for you. And as you can see, all these players from Matt Wolf through to Tiger Woods, they all differ slightly. And Dustin in particular is quite unique when he has three in the right, two in the left. Let's get back over because that curing cell is about to start beeping. So that indicates the club is cooked. Stop the timer, reset for the next guy to use it. Remove any excess glue that you might have on there, which can be a little bit, and assemble the club back together. This piece is obviously hot. It's been in there, but it will be ready to hit if you were in a situation. As soon as you can grip it and walk it out onto a driving range, it's pretty much ready to go. Grip is the next piece of the process. Tall Velvet 58 round, he takes it logo down, Three in the right, two in the left, remember that. So, across we come. So when it comes to the grip, get your marker in first to the length of the grip. So you know that obviously the length of the grip goes down to there. You don't really want the tape popping out the bottom. So he's gonna have one the full way straight out the gate. Check it, okay, good. You know if you cover that, the grip is on to the length it needs to be. You don't wanna stretch it, and you obviously don't want to leave it that it's thick as well. Again, Dustin very particular in that. He wants to get the taper out of the grip. You've already put now your first layer of three on the right has gone on. So think about it as you start to build this grip up 
how many you're going to go into. Just fold that over, that won't work, so cut that off. Take your grip, measure the length. Okay, good. Now you can either put your build up one in now, or you can keep going. Here's my second layer. Boom. Put the thumb down the side, cut off the excess. No ridges. Ridges he would feel and it would come back to the truck, truth be told. Now you've got your two in the left hand done. So we only need to add on the build up to take the taper out. Now, some players will stagger it and they'll do an inch, then a two inch piece, then a three inch piece. Dustin just goes for the straight half. So I know that I need halfway down this grip to put on the right hand piece. The next thing, you've now got a seam going down. I've put two tapes on, so I've got a seam. You don't wanna bang this on straight up top because the seam will then get thicker and you'll start to feel it. So offset the third piece, then you're avoiding any form of seam that the player is going to feel. Now you've got three on the right, two on the left. Perfect. Tour Velvet 58 round, logo down. The club head is in square. This is another thing where I think especially with a set of irons, not so important on a round grip, but some grips will have a reminder or you can see a red align piece that is down the back. Some players will want to offset the face. Remember I said Dustin wants 11 degrees on this face, so the blade is a little bit shut from what it would be to the target. They would then line up their grip to compensate for that because they might not want to miss a shot to the left or they're working on something with their golf coach. So if you imagine a clock face going down here, 12 o'clock is the top, you might get a phrase on the tour that says, okay, I want my grips on at 12.30 and they want you to align the graphics slightly off center and a down to 12.30 on a clock face with the small hand. But in Dustin's case, it's gotta be square, it's gotta be neutral. As I stand here now, I know I've put the club in neutral. I'm aligning up the grip neutral and perfectly square. Again, it's around so I can get away with it, but we're dealing with the best players in the world. They've become accustomed to how these things go on and it's got to be money as it has with everyone's golf grips. So wipe off the excess. Again, just check the alignment, flip the back. When someone has their grips on the wrong way around, you want to make sure that this is perfectly square. You haven't got golf pride going all over the place. I've got a little bit of tape under there. I will get rid of that later on. That's very amateurish of me. You wouldn't expect to see that, but I will get rid of that later on. Next thing, we have to hot melt the golf club in order to get the balance point. Balance points critical for how this club's going to perform. Let's get into that and I'll talk you through the process and why we hot melt on tour. Okay, so straight over to the swing weight machine. Now, before we start anything, this is at D2. What's D2? It's a balance point on the golf club around a 14 inch fulcrum point from the butt end of the golf club, okay? So D2 would be what we'd refer it as. I need to put in eight grams of hot melt into the heel for Dustin. What's hot melt? Why is it going in the heel? He wants to feel a draw. So anytime you put weight into the heel, that means that the toe will move quicker than the heel of the golf club. For those of you that don't know or aren't sure what the heel and the toe is, in golf we have the term of, this would be the heel, this is the toe. I'm gonna to put some weight here that would then enable that toe to move quicker and it helps Dustin square it up so you don't quite see the ball that he would lose to the right a little bit. So. For future reference, I know, back to our scales, re-zero that, this is coming in at nine grams, 9.9, .9, 10 gram weight on the sim. So I do need to look at a slightly less weight and then I can put the hot melt into the heel to compensate. We've got to find a D4 swing weight, eight grams. We'll move on to this section and I will show you exactly what the hot melt process looks like. So we heat the hosel of the hot melt and it comes, that's how hot melt will come out, okay? It's, a, it's going to dry, but it's exactly that. It comes out with heat. I will grab the golf club here, tilt it away from the face, go through the hot melt port, into the heel of the golf club. Again, you don't wanna get any of this on the face of the golf club. You're trying to find that swing weight, hot melt goes back, you can feel now there's a heat in here. As a builder, you'd feel that. 
assemble your weight together. I've gone down in weight to compensate for the eight grams. I know from experience that half a pull of the trigger is about six grams of hot melt. You can weigh that out if you're a first time user of hot melt. Screw the screw in place. Double check your swing weight before you tighten anything up. Less is more when it comes to this because you can't remove it. You can, but it's a very difficult process. We are on the money, D4, exactly the swing weight Dustin would like. Check, you can still feel where that hot melt is. It's right here in the heel. You can heat it up with a heat gun. You wouldn't use the blowtorch. If you needed to move it around after assembly, you can move it, but it's not much that you can get. Hot melt will also change the sound, that nice, whack sound that you hear on the tour comes through having this weighted system in there to dull the sound out. Check everything as you finish. He wants 11.59 over to the Dela Cruz system, which is our measuring pin. I know the head was good when I started. This will give me an exact loft and lie. We have twist face in our golf clubs, so you want to get a two pin measuring process that then goes against the face and will tell you the exact loft and lie before you send it out to the player. Obviously, you must have everything level square, lie angle's looking good, loft is looking perfect. So there you have it. You give it the final once over as a player yourself and out in the fitting, you know what he would like. Check that face angle's what he's into. I'm gonna remove this piece with a Stanley blade just for absolute perfection get the straight blade on that and just remove that final piece of tape that's sticking out although it's hardly there now job done don't want that on there then adhesive remover any fingerprints down the golf shaft on the head on the sole and that would be ready for a head cover and to go out and could be hit right now. Everything is cool, everything is dry, the hot melt has settled, it's good to go. And we'll obviously watch Dustin hit some absolute rockets with this one.